All right, everybody. So we're live. The first uh, first thing I wanted to say is happy leap year day. It's it's the 29th, February 29th. That only happens every four years, which is crazy, right? So happy leap year day. Also, thanks for joining us. We have a really exciting live workshop. This is going to be fast and furious. Let me know if you can hear me in the chat. So we always, uh, we always like to make sure that our technical difficulties are <laughs> reduced to a minimum. So anyhow, let us know if you can hear me. And then we're going to jump in. I'm trying to see what time it is. It's almost 10. I'm going to give the stream a little while to kind of populate here on YouTube. And that will give folks some time to join us. So we'll probably begin in two or three minutes. Tooth Decay, great to see you, buddy. Here's a starter question. Back in the old days, you might put a ledger board and start your full uh, full tiles. Love that and fill in the bottom later. Why don't you use that approach? So that's a great question. And we'll definitely be getting to that. Uh, typically, these days, we don't do that because, you know, it's, it's about trying to plan ahead try to plan out that layout you can do that and with actually with the some of the backer board products that are out there one of them today which we're going to talk about it's easy to fill in the holes that you put in the backer board with the ledger board so david thank you so much for joining us tooth decay thanks for letting me know that you can hear us uh awesome carrie can you use this for shower pans uh, Yvette, good to see you. Um, so Carrie, yeah, you can totally use, I guess, if you're talking about hydroband board, the answer is yes. You can definitely use hydroband board for the walls in a curbed or curbless shower. We actually have a nice tutorial here on YouTube that shows how to use hydroband board in a curbless shower. We use the Vim curbless shower pan in that project, but Latercrete, the maker of hydroband board, has a lot of different uh, options for a shower pan too. So anyhow, uh, let's see here. David, I'm new here. How often do you have these live workshops? We're gonna try to do them like once every one, every every two weeks, definitely. It really just depends on our schedule, but probably like every two weeks. And I'm, we're kind of up in the air as to how long we're gonna let this live on YouTube. That is, we might have it available for like a few days and then un publish it but if they tend to do well then we might just keep them up so we'll see um, which is kind of new to us as well so we just don't we don't know what to expect in terms of like the feedback and all that but thank you so much for joining us uh, all right so we got really a nice group of people here uh, how long do the workshops last um, I think these are going to last, this one's going to last for probably at least 48 to 72 hours. It might be longer. Uh, I'm not sure. Now, just so everybody knows who's jumping on, uh, the workshop is going to be kind of a hybrid. We're live. I'm live right now in front of you, and Steve is live in the chat. But the segments that we're going to do in the workshop today are obviously pre-recorded. And the reason why is the the loudness of doing a bathroom remodel is just it's a little bit tough to do live it would kind of blast out your speakers or your headphones oh my gosh mary lee good to see you um definitely thank you so much guys mary lee is one of our bathroom repair tutor members so thank you so much for joining us and steven thank you for letting me know that you can hear me i really appreciate it but it's great to see you mary lee in the chat um, so we're going to dive into it. Today's format is going to be three segments. The first one is going to go over how to install an acrylic bathtub on the floor. The second one is going to discuss waterproofing the walls of that bathtub using hydroband board. And the third segment is going to go over tiling tips. So even if you're not doing this specific project, you're going to get a lot of tips and suggestions for whatever project that you're working on. And hopefully those tips will help you out. So what we'll do is we're going to dive into 
we'll we'll do a presentation so a segment presentation for like three to five minutes steve will be answering questions in the chat while we go through that presentation we'll stop and we'll answer some chat questions live uh, I'll answer some questions live for like a few minutes and then we'll do the next next segment but because we know you're busy and you don't have time to stay on a live workshop forever we're gonna make this uh, to the point and get through this so that you can do other things during your day all right so let's do it let's dive into the the first part here so this is a bathtub this is an acrylic bathtub that we installed in a basement bathroom. You always want to make sure that it's vented and what we're showing you here is an adapter. Uh, sometimes you have to install an adapter down in the P-trap so that your waste overflow pipes will fit down into that. So that's what we're doing here. We're dry fitting everything, showing you the parts and we have to dry fit the bathtub to make sure that the vertical waste overflow fits into that. And it did not, as you saw there, it was off by several inches. So we actually had to adjust the waste overflow pipes and cut down the horizontal run from the drain using this rigid PVC cutter, which is an awesome tool, really makes quick use of cutting these PVC pipes. And then we adjusted our slip nuts and dry fit the bathtub again just to make sure that our pipes all fit and they did so now we're adding the PVC pipe we're adding the purple primer and we're gonna add the cement to it and just hold it in place for a few seconds while that sets up the next step is to add the adapter so again you want to prime both the fitting and the pipe add your cement to the fitting and the pipe hold that in place hold it down make sure it's in place and then we'll be adding that slip fitting in the, the washer onto our vertical waste overflow pipe that's on the tub. We're leaving that a little bit loose because we'll have to do some adjustment once we get the tub in. Now we're act actually mixing up some masonry mortar here. If you don't have a bucket mixer, Definitely check out this tool. Um, Steve might be able to put a link to that in the chat, but it's awesome for mixing up buckets of mortar and cement. We highly recommend it. But we have to fill in the waffles of this acrylic tub using this mortar, and that's per the manufacturer's recommendations. So we always recommend that you follow the recommendations of the manufacturer when you're installing a bathtub or a shower pan. So they recommend using mortar, and that's what we're using so that we can fill in those little waffles on the bottom of the tub. So we're adding our mortar to our concrete, and we're gonna we're just using this really as a stabilizer we're not it doesn't necessarily have to bond to the concrete but it has to support the tub so that's all we're doing here and as you can see that allowed us to slip our vertical pvc waste overflow pipe into our p-trap fitting that we glued in place and we're just hand tightening those nuts those slip nuts and now we'll be able to adjust the waste overflow and put in a rubber gasket and turn that so that it's going to be sealed up against the tub. Now typically we do this before installing the bathtub, but in this particular case we could not do that just because of the pipes and everything that we just showed you in the prior video. So anyhow, everything is nice and tight. We got that in place and we checked to make sure that we didn't have any leaks with the tub and the drain. So that's really important to do. The next step was to make sure that the tub was level and we pre-drilled holes in the tub flange or tub lip so that we wouldn't crack them with our galvanized screws. So you always want to pre-drill holes in the lip make sure that it's level using your four foot or two foot level the other thing with acrylic tubs is there's some flex in them so you always want to make sure that it's the flex is up or the corners are up whenever you screw them in place so that you don't get any water that's pooling in the corner and that's exactly what steve was showing you how to do there so that's how we installed this bathtub and we just wanted to share those tips with you so that you would know how to do that for your project so let's jump into the chat here uh, let's see salvador congratulations for your tips and thank you so much thank you salvador for joining us corey hey happy saturday been a while since i've been able to join you guys live glad to be back thank you so much buddy for joining us govinda you guys still use pvc and the answer is yes yes we do <laughs> it really depends on the 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 pipes in the home but pvc is a little bit more cost effective just so you know versus abs and that's why we tend 
to go with uh, PVC. So, Cosme, good to see you. Saludos, Madrid. Good to see you here. So, I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. That was the first section of our live workshop today. And as you can see, like if we were to try and duplicate that uh, during a live installation, it would have taken a lot longer. I'm not sure if it would have helped you guys out as much as if we just do a pre-recording. Duke the K, Jeff and Steve, this format of video plus discussion is novel and terrific idea. Uh, lots of prep work on your side for certain, but valuable. Well done. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And we enjoy answering all the questions in the chat. So make sure if you, if you have a question and you're watching this and you're watching it live, ask the question in the chat and either I'll help you out or Steve will help you out. But we're here. Pesca, hey, good to see you. Good morning from Oregon. Rick, do I have to put a mortar bed under my shower pan? The answer to that is it depends on the shower pan. So Rick, if you have a prefabricated shower pan, for example, Schluter, they have their specific instructions. Weedy have their instructions. It really depends on the type of shower pan that you're installing. So if you have an idea about that, which pan you're gonna be using that is, add it down in the chat and we'll help you out. Uh, let's see, it has a 4-inch PVC support already on the pan. Oh, okay, so Rick, is it a PVC, pan, like a fiberglass pan? Just let us know. Um, if there are supports on the pan and they don't say to use a mortar, then you don't have to use it. But uh, always make sure you follow the directions of the manufacturer so that you install it the right way. But you know the thing is if they do recommend mortar we would highly recommend you use mortar instead of like an adhesive or a glue because mortar is going to just be so much better in terms of the support that you're going to have underneath your shower pan tim good to see you buddy thanks so much if my tub uh, for joining us that is uh if my tub is slightly short lengthwise do i need to fur out the studs so the answer to that is you can either fur out the studs or you can actually sister new studs to the old ones so that those new studs are nice and flush with the tub flange so that you can properly secure your tub to the stud framing. The thing is you want to address any studs that are not 16 inches on center because you typically need to have 16 inch on center studs for half inch backer boards all the studs should be in the same plane as each other and they should be plumb. So all that should be addressed to him before you install the bathtub. But yes, you can either fur out the studs or you can sister new studs to the old ones to make sure that that wall is properly framed out. Now you might have to do a little bit of work on that same wall where if it's meeting up with like drywall or plaster. So that's something to consider. Um, what type of sealant is best to use? So that is a really great question, Eddie. Are you referring to sealant for the for the um, for the drain, or are you referring to silicone sealant between the tile and the tub? So there are a lot of different ones that are out there that are really good. We like CRL for that, um, but there are a lot of different manufacturers of sealant. Like you've got DAP, they make a great 100% silicone. You also have siliconized acrylic between the tile and the ceiling. So it really just depends on the application that you're using the sealant for. Hopefully that makes sense. M3, M3, drywall with curdy membrane versus curdy board. Does it matter? It doesn't really matter, but if you're going to be in a basement bathroom, I kind of err on the side, and Steve and I have talked about this, with sticking with a curdy board product or a product that has fleece on both sides because you get a lot of moisture from, at least here in Pittsburgh, you get a lot of moisture from your exterior walls with vapor and all sorts of different move, dynamic movements. So I personally like the idea of having a fleece on the back of the board. So if you do have some type of moisture in the wall, that fleece is not going to be affected by it versus having a drywall board. You know, the paper on the back side of that drywall could absorb the, the vapor and that could create a problem. But typically, you know, if you're on an interior wall system, and it's on a second floor, you could use curdy board or cur curdy membrane over drywall. Doesn't really matter. 
Let's see here. Uh, Tim, I've squared says plumb the studs. I'll have to fur out the entire wall. So yeah, you'd have to fur out the entire wall. That way your backer board in your tub surround will be flush with your drywall in the main bathroom. So Tim, really great question. And thank you so much for joining us. Tim's a bathroom repair tutor member. Stephen Williams, good morning. This is a great live discussion. I appreciate your content. Thank you so much, Stephen. We appreciate that you joined us. So if you are just joining us, the format is this. We go over three different segments. Those are not live. They're pre-recorded. I'm live right now. Steve is live in the chat. The reason we do the pre-recorded stuff is because the tools are just too loud. and Plus, we don't want to waste your time with all the other stuff that happens when we do installations. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> Dino. Here we go, Steelers. That's right. Good to see you, Dino. Uh, M3, M3, awesome, thank you. Okay, all right, so Steve is gonna be still in the chat. Let's see, I'm trying to look at my clock here. It's, we're 15 minutes in, so I'm gonna run, I'm gonna dive into the next segment, and this is gonna be about how to actually waterproof the bathtub surround. Now, let's do this, and I'll have some uh, other comments about this backer board. So in this case, we're showing you that we have all the studs, they're 16 inches on center, and we're using a quarter inch piece of furring strip here. It's just, it's just wood, it's just a piece of plywood. Instead of using roofing nails to attach those strips to the studs and we're doing this for the entire back wall which has a, been framed out for a full length shower niche and we're just getting the measurement so that we can actually add our hydro band board to the section below that full length shower niche the great thing with hydro band board and this is not sponsored by later group by the way is that you can just cut it with a utility knife and then we're using the later create hydro band board adhesive and sealant against the tub deck that's not silicone by the way and we're just using the hydro band board screws these are one and five eighths inch screws specifically for hydro band board we put them in the screw schedule that Latercrete recommends, we cut down that board using an oscillating multi-tool. We're scribe cutting this hydroband board. It's a foam board with a fleece on both sides with the utility knife. And we're just using one full board above the shower niche. And like I said, the great thing with this is you can cut it with the knife and you can kind of fine tune those cuts using your oscillating multi-tool. And here we're adding it to the bottom sill plate of this full length shower niche, just making sure that we pitch it ever so slightly downward toward the bathtub shower drain. And then we're applying the hydro band sealant along the perimeter of our framing and we're adding the board and again, making sure that it's pitched and we're just screwing it down to the two by fours. It's really important that it's pitched. Can't highlight that enough. So if you're doing this in a typical shower, uh, just do the exact same thing. That little four inch level by Husky is awesome, by the way. So we cut that to size again using our oscillating multi-tool you just get your measurements, snap a chalk line, cut the hydroband board, dry fit it. And because drywall is on the other side of the shower, we're just applying the hydroband board adhesive and sealant to the drywall. And then we're going to stick the hydroband board to that. Steve did a great job with this. Uh, just a masterful insulation and waterproofing. And then we're going to be waterproofing the top of the niche as well with the hydro band board and cutting that to size. Now for the two side walls, we're gonna run our three by five board into the niche. We'll show you that in a second. But we're just transferring the location of our tub piping onto the board. You can cut this out with a drywall knife or a spade bit. Spade bit makes short order of that. And we're sliding that board into the shower niche. So we just made a notch in the board to do that. And you just wanna make sure it's flush you can tap it to get the mark on it for your mixing valve and we just cut a hole using a hole saw for the mixing valve. So again, very, very quick to install this board, but anywhere where the board's made up and also up against the tub lip. So in this case, we're applying hydroband sealant on the tub lip on the perimeter of the boards that we just installed so that whenever we install this board, it's gonna be sealed tight to its neighbors and then again we're just going to scribe cut this so if it's nice and flush with our adjacent drywall that's outside the tub shower 
But you can see how quick this is to install. We applied sealant to the bottom of that board and then we just installed that up to the ceiling, leaving a slight gap. But we did the exact same thing on the third wall that's opposite the plumbing wall. And again, we're just putting these boards above the tub lip so that they will be flush with our half inch drywall, which is in the, the rest of the bathroom. And once you're done installing all these boards, you have to go over your seams again and your screws using the hydroband adhesive and sealant. That is really important to do. You want overlap by at least one inch on either side of that seam. Uh, and you got to make sure that the sealant is nice and flush with the boards so that it doesn't affect your tile work. That's also very important to consider when you're installing any type of backer board is how the sealant or the mortar is going to affect your tile work after you're done with all of this. So again, we have to fill in all of the holes with the sealant, but that was super easy to do. And you can use this same sealant around the piping that comes out of the wall that helps you seal the copper pipe for the tub to the board and this will make a watertight seal. Uh, you do the exact same thing up above for your shower arm if you want. And again, because we have this board sitting above the tub deck, we have to fill in the gap between the tub deck and the board with this hydroband adhesive and sealant. And you just use uh, a two or a three inch putty knife to do that. Same thing with up against the drywall that's next to the tub. You want to fill all that in with a hydroband board adhesive and sealant and you'll be good to go. That's a waterproofing material. Material, it's not silicone. So again, you know, that that's something that you want to consider whenever you're doing this type of uh, installation. So that's what the final look actually appears like. All right, guys, so that was a lot of information in about five or six minutes. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the chat. And I know that Steve has been answering a ton of questions, so I'll try to go back and see if I miss any that maybe we didn't address. But lots of really great questions today. One of the things that Steve and I wanted to bring up to you is if you're not already a bathroom repair tutor member and you're doing a project like this or you're doing a curb shower or a curbless shower and maybe you feel a little bit lost and you need help, make sure you check out Bathroom Repair Tutor. That's another website that we've created ourselves that's step by step, no matter what skill level you are, Bathroom Repair Tutor will be able to help you out with your projects. And if you're a Platinum member, you'll be able to jump into our private Facebook group where we help you answer questions and you can post pictures. And so it's really a phenomenal resource. So again, if you're feeling a little bit lost with your bathroom remodeling, make sure you check out Bathroom Repair Tutor today. We really feel like it could help you out. Okay, let's see here. I know that we have a lot of really good questions. So I just want to make sure that we answer those. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, I know. Let's see here. I'm going to try. Uh, Corey, I want to use a hybrid glass slash porcelain mosaic for an accent in the center of my shower valve wall. Can I use the large format thin set I have left over, or do you suggest I use a different thin set? So, Corey, you could probably use the same thin set. And uh, we highly recommend that if you're going to be using a mosaic, that the mosaic actually be bonded to your substrate using a non-sag thinset mortar. So, for example, one of our favorite ones for that is Ardex X77. It's phenomenal. Uh, Later Crete also has 254 and Trilight. And then, frankly, Schluter's uh, All Set is also very good with this. And if you're having problems getting the mosaic to sit flush with the rest of your tile, we have a lot of tips for how to accomplish that. Uh, Salvador, hope you have a great weekend too. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Uh, and Corey, thank you so much for the uh, bathroom repair tutor shout out. Let's see here. Dino, that board can sit right on top of the tub. The answer to that is yes. But if you're going to be putting the hydroband board on top of the tub, remember again, you know, you want to fill in that gap between the hydroband board and the tub deck using the hydroband adhesive and sealant. That's going to be really, really important. So let's see here. Uh, 
I know we get a lot of really good questions in the chat. Can I use liquid waterproofing membrane for corners and seams? Let's see here, Orlando. I may have missed Orlando's original question, so I'm just going to try to scroll back here. Now, in terms of using um, a liquid waterproofing membrane with hydroband board, it's not necessary. I just wanted to go ahead and uh, uh, highlight that. So you don't really need to use anything else over hydroband board, and uh, it's unnecessary, and you'll be wasting money doing that. Okay, let's see here. Uh, okay, so Dino has a really great question, and hydroband board won't wick water? Question mark. And the answer to that is no. Hydroband board should not wick water. The foam core does not do that. Uh, I know that there's some concern with that with cement board products, and that can happen, but that will not happen with the hydroband board. It's a really great product. Plus, the adhesive and sealant uh, that you're using is going to prevent that from happening. Uh, let's see here. Michael H., what if the niche is an outside wall slash stucco wall? Do you attach the board to that directly or to that wall? Okay, so maybe two different questions here. So one thing that we'd like to address is on an outside wall, we don't really recommend putting a niche on the outside wall. Instead, you could build up that outside wall with another 2x4 wall, then you could put your niche in that. It doesn't really matter if you put hydroband board on an outside wall. That should not matter. Just make sure that um, you, know, you use the right type of insulation. We would recommend rock wool because it's not affected by vapor. It's not affected by any moisture. So if there is kind of vapor movement in and out of that wall, rock wool is not affected by that, which is great. So hopefully I answered those questions. Uh, okay, Daniel. Um, great tips, guys. That board can be used on a stand-up shower pan as well? Question mark. And the answer to that is yes. You can totally use hydroband board for a curb shower or a curbless shower. Awesome product. We highly recommend it. Uh, Later Creed has a winner there. Okay, 42 Bill D. Schluter seems to show their sloped pan install with no access to plumbing from bottom by installing the middle section first. If I'm ready to install the pan, why can't I put it all together? And you can, Bill, you can put it all together. You don't have to, I mean, you can put your pan down and then you can put your drain down over top of that. And so you can put it all together at one time. You don't have to put the Schluter drain in and then wait and then put your pan in. That's only if you have a plumber come in and do the drain. They can use the little foam tabs that come with the drain that mimic the height of the shower pan necessary for that drain installation. But you can put the pan in and the drain in all on the same day. Okay, so let's see. My shower project is on the second floor in a townhouse, no exterior walls. I've used green board for the walls. I just demoed this 30-year-old bathroom which had green board and there was no moisture problems. Do I still need to put on a sealant of some kind? So the answer to that is for the green board outside of the shower area, you probably don't need to put any sealant on top of that. You don't need any red guard outside the shower area. That's fine. But inside the shower area, that has to be completely waterproof. So really great question. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see here. And Steve is doing an awesome job, guys, in the chat. So if you have any questions that I missed, please ask them in the chat. Let's see here. We're going to jump into the next step of this sh this particular shower installation. And this is going to be a, a, about tiling. Now, like I said at the beginning, even though this is about a tub shower combo, the tiling tips in this particular segment can apply to many different types of showers. So let's dive into so first of all, we're using 4XLT thinset, and we cut these tiles to size. We actually cut a few inches off of the first row of tile here per our planning. And it's really important that you do layout way ahead of time before you even mix up your thinset mortar. And we're using, we're going to center this tile on the tub, so we're just marking the center. And then we're adjusting our laser level to the edge of that tile. And what's really important is we have spacers between the first row of tile and that 
and the tub. And so we mix up that 4XLT per Latacrete's instructions. We're burning it into the hydro band board with the flat side of the trowel. Very important because this is going to help you get proper thin set coverage on the wall. So then we're using a quarter inch by quarter inch square notch trowel for this. The only thing that we change about this installation perhaps is vertically running the, the trowel ridges, but these tiles aren't very big. The only reason we would run them vertically is that allows the air to escape a little bit faster uh, and it goes across the short side of the tile. So we're just making sure that these tiles are lined up with our laser level. This gets back to Tooth Decay's question about using a ledger board. It's unnecessary when you're using a laser level. We're just making sure again that the top edge of the tile meets up with our laser level and that we leave a gap in between the changes of plane in this, in this tub shower combo. So again, we're back buttering all these tiles and we're actually going to be stacking them on top of each other. This can be a little bit tricky because you don't want to have any lippage between the tiles. And so that is really, really important to consider. Uh, let's see here. Dino, thank you so much, buddy, for the super chat. Always appreciate it, pal. Thank you again, Dino. Uh, and please feel free to ask any questions. We're always happy to help you out. So we're making our way up to the top edge of our shower niche. Again, just making sure all of our tiles are nice and level. And in this case, we're using a piece of Schluter Ron deck, which we pre-cut. And we're going to be capping our shower niche with that. Now, the thing is, we're going to be adding a lot of thin set to the shower sill here in a moment. We'll explain why. But we just, we backfilled all of our tiles uh, with thin set mortar, we made sure we had plenty of thin set mortar and we slid the Ron deck behind that. Not necessarily what Schluter recommends, but that's how we did it. And then we added a copious amount of thin set to the shower sill so that we can actually make sure that our tiles remain pitched yet flush with the edge of the Schluter Ron deck. That's going to be really important for a nice aesthetically pleasing tile job. And so we can actually build up X XLT, 4XLT by about a half inch, although we didn't need that in this case. But we're just setting the tile, making sure that we have our expansion and contraction joints on the back of the shower ditch, and making sure that the tiles meet flush with that Schluter Ron deck. But again, you want to use a little level to ensure that the tiles have that pitch downward ever so slightly toward the shower drain and then cleaning out these grout joints and making sure you don't have any thin set in the grout joints or between the Ron deck. Super important guys, you don't want any thin set between the expansion and contraction joints. Here we're just drawing a plumb line on the wall because we need that for our tile. And again, we're going to be using a piece of Schluter Ron deck to cap off this tile because we don't have any type of bull nose. But anyhow, we're cutting this tile. What we're going to do is wrap the elbow of this tile around the elbow of the, the shoulder of the, the tub, rather. So we're going to have to make an inch horseshoe shim between the tiles and the tub deck. Ultra important for expansion and contraction. Each course of tile to make sure that they remain not only level but plumb with each other, especially with the stacked subway tiles. And that is something that you'll want to do, especially if you're using Schluter Rondek. Just making sure that all of that remains plumb as you're climbing the wall. Now, in this case, we tiled the first several rows of the, the first column, and then we had to cut out this half moon shape using our angle grinder and diamond blade. Be very careful when you're doing that, and also wear a silica dust respirator for your health. Uh, so this is a milling bit by Montelite. We wanted to show you this. If you want a little bit finer cuts, you can use this bit to kind of core out your tile. Not absolutely necessary, but if you're a perfectionist and you want to make sure that that looks good behind the escutcheon, you can use that. And then we're just climbing the wall up to uh, roughly just a, um, you know, the, the half half wall point. So we finished that tub shower surround. It looked great. You saw a picture of it in the last segment. And all of those video tutorials are available inside the bathroom repair tutor video library. Just wanted to let you know. So if you are a bathroom repair tutor 
video library member, you have access to all the tutorials that we just showed you in this live workshop. And you can check those out for yourself. And if you have trouble finding those, we'll send you, we can send you the links. So let's dive into the chat here. Uh, Mary Lee, what saw is Steve using to cut these tiles? And the answer to that is he's using the, the Walt wet saw. It's the D24000. So the D24000 is the Walt's 24 inch wet saw. Uh, great tool, we love it. You can actually use a manual tile cutter to cut all those four by 12 subway tiles. You don't necessarily need a wet saw, but that's what we ended up using. And we would highly recommend you checking out Montelite's uh, Master Puma series of manual tile cutters are great. If those are a little bit too expensive for you and your budget, then you could also check out the Ishi Big Clinker series. Those are great too. Uh, much better than the store manual tile cutters that you find at like the big box stores. Uh, Ruby also makes great tile cutters. So, and we can also send you links to all those different things. But you don't necessarily need a wet saw for that project, but we did it. The other thing is if you get a good angle grinder, so Milwaukee makes great angle grinders, uh, Fine makes great angle grinders, you don't have to get super expensive ones. For example, if you get the Milwaukee, Milwaukee is a four and a half inch angle grinder with an electronic brake for like 120 bucks. We highly recommend you get one with an electronic brake. But if you couple that with a good diamond blade, you can cut tile with an angle grinder too. Just be very safe, like we mentioned. Okay, let's see here. Uh, M3 M3, thanks Steve. Our shower, our shower is 16 years old. It's necessary. Is it necessary to replace the shower valve? So I don't know as if Steve is probably answering this now, but this is a great question from M3M3. If you're redoing your shower and the shower is older, like 10 years or older, we highly recommend that you just swap out the roughen valve because you're doing all this work. You might as well just swap out the roughen valve and have a new one actually look at all the plumbing and swap out all the old plumbing for new plumbing you don't want to have to worry about that stuff when you're you know spending lots of money on redoing a bathroom and we like delta moen uh, delta moen growy hans growy those are all great roughen valves let's see here i may have missed some questions but steve uh, again is doing a great job in the chat guys so you know feel free to ask your question in the chat and we're probably going to go for like another 10 minutes or so, uh, just so we can get all the questions answered. Uh, um, okay, Joel, Schluter Curdy Bore versus Schluter Waterproofing Membrane, the Curdy Membrane. So, Joel, I personally like the Curdy Bore. It just, I don't know. I know it's a little bit more work than the Curdy Membrane, but I like having the fleece on both sides of the backer board just because if you do get some water vapor in the walls not a big deal um, and curry board is very light and easy to cut so I like curry board but both are wonderful options let's see here Steven can you get a bad laser level I bought a Bosch one and it wasn't always self-leveling as it said it should not sure if I need to return it you know what in that case Steven well the answer is yes you can in that case, I would totally return it and try to get a new one. Uh, I know the settings on Bosch laser levels can be finicky. So, or the batteries, if the batteries are, are dead or if they were older, the batteries can drastically affect a laser level. So you always want to make sure that you swap out the batteries for fresh ones. That can really affect uh, the, um, the performance of a laser level. Mike J, will bathroom repair tutor help with subway tile layout and a shower that has a corner bench? Uh, so yes, definitely, Mike. We have a video series and a course on doing that exactly. So over on Bathroom Repair Tutor, we show you how to install 4x12 subway tile. You could use any size subway tile. But we also show you how to build the bench, how to waterproof it, add the solid quartz bench top, and then tile around that underneath it, and also how to do the layout so that the layout looks good both below the bench and at the curb level. That's going to be really important. So Bathroom Repair Tutor has all of those videos in the video library. 
And then our curb shower master course might be something that you would like as well. And we can actually uh, make sure that you get that if you enroll today. So Tim, in the bathroom repair tutor video library, you showed two different methods of filling boards to the tub gap. Jeff used curdy fix and Steve has a video where he used thin set and curdy band. Do you recommend one method over the other? So the answer to that, and this is a really great question from Tim, the answer is we do. So Schluter actually uh, recommends that you use curdy fix in that gap, Tim. So and the reason why is if there is movement in your stud or m movement in your your home, which there will be, the curdy fix will kind of conform to that movement, whereas thin set obviously doesn't do as good of a job. So we would recommend and Schluter would recommend I probably shouldn't speak on their behalf because things change, but for that one video, they did recommend using curdy fix in the gap between the curdy board and the tub deck. So that's that's the method that we would recommend. But great, great question. Okay, let's see here. Awesome, lots of awesome questions here, guys. Keep them coming. We'll be online here for I'm trying to see like probably about five more minutes. Uh, let's see here, Mary Lee. So you mentioned 4X, 4XLT as a product that can be built up to about a quarter inch. Could you be more specific about this product? So as a matter of fact, Mary Lee, a lot of the different thin set mortars have specifications on how much you can build it up. So for example, uh, we also like Ardex products and, and most of the Ardex products you can build up to about a half inch thickness. This comes in handy if you do have to build up the, the sill of a shower niche and build up the tile so that it'll meet flush with your Rondek like we showed in this video. So 4XLT is from Latacrete, wonderful modified thin set if you're going to be using hydroband board. Uh, they also make tri-light. It really just depends on the type of thin set border that you're using and we would have to read through the technical data sheet to see how much you can build up that thin set mortar. But typically it's a it's about a half inch. South London, Resolur, great show. This has come up in my feed watching from the UK. We're about to remodel our bathroom. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for joining us from the UK. We're about six hours behind you guys are six hours ahead so that's awesome i'm glad that you got to join us today and by the way guys we are live like i'm live here and then steve is live in the chat the only thing again that's not live are the tutorials that we share with you okay so michael do you have tutorials on building a shower pan and would you recommend someone that has never built a pan attempt this so michael it's possible to build what you're talking about is a mud bed or, or a mud pan you could do it, it would just take a lot of patience and research. That said, if you've never done it before and you have the option between a mud bed and a pre-slope shower pan, we would recommend that you go with the pre-slope because, for example, Schluter shower pans, they're $100. And if you follow the Schluter directions and use their drain, which is really user-friendly, it's a very it's a it's a very user friendly installation and it's not going to take you as long and because it's pre sloped you will ensure that your water will drain properly which is very very important for a, a shower Fran do you guys ever use epoxy grout is there less maintenance with it thanks for the help great question Fran so two options for epoxy grout we absolutely love later create spectralock that's a very user friendly epoxy grout but you have to mix all of the part A and part B together. That's critical. You add a color into that. And the cleanup is really, uh, it's actually not as bad as you would think. So epoxy grout, in terms of using that, Spectral Lock is awesome. Ardex WA is an epoxy adhesive and grout that also is very good and very user friendly. The cleanup is a little bit trickier just because it can be sticky. So you have to make sure that you get that residue off of your tiles. But Ardex WA is also fantastic. Corey, is it necessary to seal glazed ceramic in a shower? The answer to that is, it depend, we'd have to see that, but typically a glazed porcelain, you don't have to seal that. Wood grout is the best for a walk-in shower these days. Sanded, unsanded, FA, should grout be sealed? So the grout is dependent on the type of tile species that you used. 
But the three grouts that we absolutely love and recommend are Mapei Ultra Color Plus FA. It's a fast drying grout. It's kind of a, and you don't need to seal that. It's kind of a hybrid between like a sanded and an epoxy. So it's, and it's very affordable. You can buy 10 pound bags. Then we love Spectralock Epoxy Grout from Latacrete and Artex WA Epoxy Grout. Those are our three, those are the three that we highly recommend. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I may have missed some questions, but Steve is answering a lot of different ones. Okay. Okay, Joe, later Crete sells mesh tape for seams. Is it, is it any better to use the tape? Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that not required if you use hydroband on the edges and up to one inch feathered out on each seam? So let me see if Steve answered this, Joe. I just want to make sure that... Uh, okay, so yeah, you can use the mesh it's not necessary with the hydroband board we just use the sealant uh, Steve actually did go into a little bit more detail on this in the chat but the idea is you know you want to be quick you want it to be solid but you also want to you know apply the methodology that Lady Crete recommends and they totally recommend just using the adhesive and sealant for this particular installation uh, so that's what the way that we did it and that's that's what we would recommend Okay, guys, it's we're about 45 minutes in, so we're going to wrap up things. Remember, if you're a bathroom repair tutor member, you can, and you're a platinum member, you can ask your questions in the private Facebook group, and we will totally get to those. Uh, if you're not a bathroom repair tutor member, make sure you check it out. It's awesome. It's a great resource. We actually have a course that we have enrollment for right now over on Bathroom Repair Tutor, but the video library is phenomenal, and we're constantly adding to it so if you're a little bit lost and you're doing a bathroom remodel and you want help with that make sure you check out bathroom repair tutor because we do the same kind of helping out for our members that you saw in today's live stream so again thank you so much for joining us if we didn't answer your question you can always ask it in the comment section here on youtube and we'll definitely try to get to that so again thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next live workshop take care